Do you have credit cards? I do. So I use my credit cards for everything because you get points back. So I figured if you're going to spend the money anyway, and if you're going to pay your balance, then you might as well get like the free points that come with it. So what do you use the one for? Just for everything, and then we just pay it off monthly. So we get rewards. <laughs> you guys have any credit cards? You have to have credit cards. Whoa, whoa, have you, to? Well, okay, okay. So you want to take Strong a Strong statement. You, you have to no, because what if you... establish credit if, in the beginning. Do you get any perks or anything that you're you oh, get excited about? Oh, we do for, uh, for gas. For gas. Yeah. So we get you get money out. gas, yes. I get points. Okay. So you like the points, he likes the gas. Something for everybody okay. here. How much free money have you received from credit card? I've been about $700. Okay. Yes. Do you get like rewards from using your card? I do a little bit, yeah. And what are a, those rewards? Um, so right now I just get a little bit of cash back. Does that change your life or is it kind of just, meh? Uh, it's, it's an extra it's meal. It's nice. From Ramsey Network, this is The Fine Print, a show where we talk about the hidden truths that are keeping you broke. I'm George Camel, and in every episode, I do the research for you on the latest financial trends and traps to help save you time and money. This week, we're talking about a shiny piece of plastic that has become a part of the fabric of American culture. Nope, not Kim Kardashian. I'm talking about credit cards. And more specifically, the main reason people are using them. For the rewards. Statistically speaking, 80% of you listening right now probably have at least one credit card in your wallet. Or if you're fancy, it's loaded into your smartphone or watch. And like you heard in the opening, credit card users love them some rewards. In fact, 79% of credit card users say that rewards are the most attractive feature of their favorite card. I remember being the same exact way. When I was 22, I got sucked in with the allure of up to 5% cash back on a Discover card. What I actually discovered was how bad I was at managing money. Thousands of dollars later, I got some cash back. And along with it, a big old pile of credit card debt. And 48% of America is right there with me, unable to pay off their credit card bill every month. But hey, at least we get those rewards, right? Well, kind of. A 2021 bank rate study found that 31% of people never actually redeem their rewards. So to figure out if all the incentives, cash back, free flights, and gift cards really get you ahead when it comes to your money, I talked to Elena Batella. These days, she's a researcher and writer on consumer issues and the economy. But not too long ago, she was a senior business manager for the credit card division at Capital One. You probably know their tagline, but here's what's in their wallet. $26 billion. That's how much revenue they made in 2020 by being one of the biggest lenders in the country. And while Elena was working there, she saw firsthand how rewards are great for credit card companies and not always great for the consumer. So I started working at Capital One in 2013. I was right out of college, really didn't know that much about the industry. So I came in, yeah, believing it was an industry where I was really thinking that credit was just a tool that people um, could use. I had had this mentality that people were gonna decide whether or not they needed to borrow money and make this informed decision on their own. But really I realized that there's so many people who get the credit card just for the rewards initially, and then occasionally start spending more than they expected. And it really gets into this cycle where one or two bad months turns into interest that they then can't afford to pay off, where they can then be really stuck in debt for years over one or two months where they didn't realize they were spending more than they earned. According to Elena, overspending and stumbling into cycles of debt is exactly what these companies are hoping for. And they're not just hoping for it, they're aiming for it. Yeah, if you look at Capital One, Chase, City, what you'll see if you look at their job postings is one thing they look for people who are good at is they'll say, we want people who have um, expertise in running experiments. The reason they say that is because all these credit card companies do literally tens of thousands of experiments on their customers every year. One of the main types of experiments is sending people different combination of terms and seeing what causes you to open the mail and apply. And then they've really got it down to a science to figure out not just across the board, but even for specific people, what's going to cause them to get into the most debt. And so it's not surprising then that that has evolved in the direction of getting more and more complicated over time. And on the flip side of, of these people experiencing hardship, you know, a lot of the stories I hear and people outside of my realm that are, you know, friends on Facebook, they'll go, yeah, but 
George, I'm winning, okay? I haven't paid for a vacation yeah. in years. I'm I'm hacking the system. I'm beating the game. Is that a reality? Have you heard success stories like that? And are those people really winning? Yeah, so I think it's sort of a mixed bag. I don't want to say that nobody wins from the system of credit card rewards. I think I would sort of say there are a system of winners and losers. Um, so I will say I do think some people get a good deal from credit card rewards, although there are a lot of tricks and hidden fees. And I think there's a lot of people who think that they're getting a good deal who aren't. I mean, we can talk a little bit about some of the tricks with rewards, but I think the biggest way that it comes about is it just encourages people to spend more than they would otherwise to get that early spend bonus, um, to get those rewards to go on that vacation. And that, that means even if it doesn't push them into debt, it doesn't mean that that's helping them with their financial goals when they could have been um, saving for retirement, saving for their kids' education, paying off their own student loans if they have them, whatever the case may be. Talk to me more about those tricks because I do feel like there's a lot of things people yeah. don't know about this industry, about rewards and points. They just see if I spend X amount, by the end of the year, I'll get a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. So what are those other tricks? I think there's three tricks that everybody should have in mind when it comes to credit card rewards. The first is that they can take away your credit card rewards if you miss a payment. That's a fairly common industry practice, although it's not every credit card issuer. The second one is that credit card rewards can be devalued. So you see this less with cash rewards and more common with like any sort of hotel point, airline point, but even things where it's like a generic point or mile system with a credit card that they'll, it might be at first when you open the card, might be able to get a hotel with 20,000 points. And then suddenly without really making a lot of public announcement, they'll change it where it's like, oh, that same hotel will now be 30,000 points. And it's sort of this like gradual deflation of how much your credit card rewards are worth over time. So it's a currency that's not the same as cash by any stretch of the imagination because they can say that a point that was worth a penny today, maybe you'll wake up tomorrow and it will be worth one tenth of a penny. And then the third trick that I think people should be aware of is you probably have seen a lot of these blogs that advertise, you know, what's the best way for me to use my Chase points or which card has the best sign-on bonus. And all of these kind of bloggers and even companies like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, the way they make money is by getting advertisement payments from credit card companies that pay for favorable spots. It's really kind of a glossy form of advertising. That's interesting. And I've, I was just looking at some research that was showing kind of a, a card A where they say, hey, you get 2% in cash. And another one where they say, hey, if you get 5,000 yep. points, you can redeem a $50 gift card. And that level of confusion and gamification can kind of psychologically uh, make consumers go, well, I don't really know how much I'm getting anymore because it's not all you know, apples to apples here. Have you seen that psychology and marketing side where they are using these experiments to go, hey, if we call it points instead of cash back, people kind of lose the connection to how much they're spending? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really, the point of the experiments is to figure out, you know, two things. One is for taking the same amount of money from you, what way can they display it that seems the cheapest? And so really the whole evolution of these credit card rewards, very complicated fees and pricing structure. I mean, the average credit card has about 30 different price points. So 30 different ways that the amount you pay is altered by different fees, interest rates, like tiers of rewards. The whole point of that is to tinker around the edges and figure out for each person, what's the thing that they're going to think is the best deal. And then the second part of it is what set of terms cause them to use the card in the way that is the most profitable for the credit card company. My conversation with Elena was super eye-opening to just how sneaky these companies can be. Constantly running experiments and finding just the right combination to offer in order to get you to sign up for their card. And why would they promise all of these free flights and cash back and other too good to be true incentives? It can't just be because they're trying to be nice, right? At the end of the day, these companies are trying to make money, and they know that most Americans won't actually just use their card for emergencies or even pay it off every month, which causes those crazy high interest rates to kick in and puts money back in their pockets. You should always know that if a strategy overall 
was losing money, the credit card companies would just stop it, right? So if a majority of people were really ripping off the credit card companies by getting rewards, they would stop offering rewards, like um, immediately. The vast majority of people who think that they're gaming the credit card companies, to do it correctly, like you almost have to make it a full-time job, at which point I would say, well, what if you spent all of that energy on your actual full-time job. Is there another way to spend that energy that would mean more for your family's financial future? And I think in most cases, the amount of diligence it takes to really like, quote unquote, beat the system is so high that at that point, like you're really wasting your time relative to the pennies on the dollar that you're yeah. getting. I learned a whole lot from Elena's time in the belly of the credit card beast. But the thing that really got me was the fact that they run 10,000 experiments on customer behavior to better grasp how to get them into debt and keep them there. And if you're a mouse in a giant experiment, then you might think you've won when you make it to the cheese. And all this talk of chasing rewards and cheese and mice reminds me of nine-year-old George visiting the entertainment mecca of the late 20th century, Chuck E. Cheese, where a kid can be a kid. What I remember most about this place is not the smell of the dirty socks in the ball pit, the sight of that creepy animatronic band, or the taste of that pizza that was equal parts cardboard and SpaghettiOs. It was the sounds. My parents would give me 10 bucks, I'd put it into the magic machine, and I'd watch and listen as it turned that boring old bill into shiny gold tokens of joy. I'd scoop them up, and I'd begin the best eight minutes of my life until they ran out. From Wacky Gator to Cyclone to Ski Ball, I was momentarily transported to a germ-infested paradise. These games would suck those tokens in, and after approximately 42 seconds of fun, it would spit out a measly five tickets, if I was lucky. I'd take my winnings and head to the prize counter to claim my reward. I'd look up at the wall with high hopes that I had enough tickets to get the really good prizes. And then I'd feel my poor little heart sink when I realized I could only afford the dinky prizes in the glass case below. Two pieces of sour candy and one of those stretchy sticky hands. So in the end, I had blown $10 and eight minutes to get some overpriced junk that I would never bat an eyelash at in a store. Nine-year-old me was under the illusion that I was winning the game. But in the end, I was the one who got played. Jacob Savek can relate. Not to my experiences at Chuck E. Cheese, I didn't think to ask him about that, but to the Chuck E. Chase of credit card rewards. See what I did there? For Jacob, it was all about those free airline miles. And unfortunately for him, those rewards never quite took flight. Instead, he found himself falling deeper into debt, racking up interest and fees that would take him years to pay off. So back in 2014, it was really kind of reestablished credit in a sense of, hey, I can get a name brand credit card and, oh, I can get Southwest points so I can have flights in the sense of, oh, we can take a trip. It's not going to cost us anything. And did that pan out for you? Well, at the time, yes, it seemed that way. Because when you sign up and you put those first purchases on there and you hit this little benchmark, they hit you with like 50,000 points. Oh, you get kind of these sign-up bonuses. Like, hey, if you make all these purchases right. the first month, we'll give you these 50,000 points. Right. right, and it's just it's points or dollars. So it made it easy, but that was the last time it was easy because mm. then it just got expensive. Well, a lot of people, they open these cards and they go, well, I'm never going to... I'm never going to pay interest. I'm going to pay this thing off every month without fail. Did you become one of those people? Yes, I did. And I have the proof because in 2014 alone, I paid $450 in interest and fees. And I opened the card that year. Wow. And what were the rewards? What did you actually end up getting? Did all the math and tried to kind of figure out, looking back at the flights we took. And it looks like we took about probably eight flights round-trip flights. So what did those flights cost you as far as your credit card spending? Do you know? Yeah. It's about $278 per person for the average round-trip flight. We would look for the cheapest flight you know, we could find that took the least amount of points so we could maximize the number of flights that we thought weren't going to cost us anything. So 
that came up to a little over $2,200. So there's two ways I looked at it. And I said, all right, well, let's subtract that off of our total that I spent just in interest and fees. And that's about $3,600 or $449 average in interest per flight. Oh, so if you bought these flights outright, you just went to southwest.com, you don't have a credit card, you would have spent $2,200 is what you're telling me. Right. But instead you spent... $5,800 in interest and fees. Yikes. Not to mention that hundred and some dollar a month payment going out the door every single month on that credit card. And I can take it a step further. We just paid off about two months ago, the credit card we used to pay for our honeymoon nine years ago. Oh my gosh. Reliving the memories. Right. Every month for nine years. Subconsciously, I knew I was getting screwed on the deal, but it wasn't until last week when I was looking back and digging in and getting all the numbers that I said, oh my gosh. This is what we actually spent for our quote unquote free flights with the airlines. I don't even want to think about how many times we paid for our honeymoon. Where do you think you'd be financially if it wasn't for that Chase card? We could be closer to either being out of debt or out of debt. And my wife, who is at work, would, would be home with our child because that's what she wants to do. She wants to be a stay-at-home mom. So it's holding you guys back from living the life you want where you have options and she can decide, oh, I can stay home because we don't have any payments. Exactly, yep. Mm. That's what my wife wants to do. She wants to want to be a stay-at-home mom, at least while they're, you know, home. Sadly, Jacob's story is not super unique. With almost half of consumers not paying off their card every month and the average interest rate sitting at over 16%, just one missed payment can set you back way faster than a 2% reward can ever push you forward. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, George, I pay my card off every month without fail. I'm not a dummy. Well, to that I say, let's do the math. Let's say you make $45,000 and you put everything you possibly can on your credit card this year. Well, after taxes and your rent or mortgage comes out, you could probably spend 25 grand on that card if you were just swiping and put nothing away in savings all year long. With an average of 2% cash back, you'd get $500 back at the end of the year. Now, 500 bucks might sound like a lot of money, but you're not taking into account a whole bunch of stuff. For starters, your card probably has an annual fee and a high interest rate if you don't pay it off in full. Next up, you probably wouldn't have spent $25,000 if you were spending your own hard-earned money using cash or a debit card. If you need some science to back this up, multiple studies show that people do in fact spend way more when they use a credit card than when they use cash. A study from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston showed that the average value of cash transactions was $22, compared with $112 for non-cash transactions, aka credit cards. That's a 409% spending increase by swiping for some cash back. Fees, interest, risk, and overspending aside, you're still not doing the math on what those rewards cost in reality. Jacob realized he could have bought those flights with cash or a debit card for way cheaper than it cost him through credit card spending and redeeming the miles. And if the math won't convince you, my friend Anthony O'Neill just might. He's a best-selling author and financial expert and he knows the credit card rat race all too well. Here's a recent clip from his show, The Table with Anthony O'Neill. Why do you need a credit card? Oh, for reward points. Why not get the free reward points? Is it really a reward to get into debt? Half of you all right now, oh, I'm getting these points. I'm getting these free airline miles. Are you really getting it for free? You're just racking up debt. You're playing with fire. Trust me, I did it for years. 
I got the credit card for emergencies. You know what turned into an emergency? To impress her, to take her out to Red Lobster, to buy some flowers, to take her on a trip down the road. That turned into a freaking emergency. That turned me into debt. And then that led me to sleeping in the back of my car because of me trying to impress people. But then you know what happened? When I went to impress people, they were rocking with me. But then when I was on the bottom, when I was sleeping in the back of my car, when I had to wash myself at a, a boys and girls club, at a YMCA, no one offered me a place to come take a shower. No one offered me a place to come get something to eat. No one offered me a place to come lay my head. But when I had the money, when I had the credit cards, when I was wrapped up in debt and spending it all on the ladies, all on my friends, they loved me then. But then when I really needed them, no one was there for me. Now that's my story. That may not be your story. One of my family members has eight credit cards. I'm like, what the heck? Eight credit cards? But then every time I look at this family member, this family member is always asking for money, always asking for help. Well, why are you asking for help? Because you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're racking up debt and you're living way beyond your means. For what? So you can look good? It is not worth it. Debt robs you of your future. Debt destroys your dreams. Debt will prevent you from accomplishing your visions and your goals when it comes to building true wealth. Stop coming at me. Oh, credit card points. It's good to, to, to get that free 1.9 or it's good to establish a credit score. No, man. A lot of you in America right now carry credit cards. Oh, man, I got the black card in my back pocket. What, what the heck does that mean? That means absolutely nothing. I'm going to brag about having debt in my back pocket. Shut the... Be quiet. All right? Americans with credit card debt carry on average, on average, a balance of $6,870. The American household carry an average balance of $14,000. What? Now watch this, only 48%, less than half of credit card users pay their bill in full every single month. And you're wondering why 78% of us are living paycheck to paycheck and struggling because less than half of us, oh, I just have a credit card for emergencies. I just have a credit card because I want to able to get my airline miles, but you ain't paying it off. Anthony's passion there is rooted in experience. He's seen it firsthand, and he's seen what it's doing to an entire generation of millennials who weren't taught this stuff in school or at home. We've got to think bigger than points and rewards. We've got to think about our future, about our spending habits, and about a long-term plan for our money. As you've heard from Anthony's story, Jacob's story, my story, and Elena's insights, it's easy to get sucked into the land of rewards. And I get it. It feels like you're being smart with your money. But in reality, you're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. And that's always a bad move. Stop playing the game, cut up the card, and pay for things with debit or cash. Once you start being more intentional with every dollar, creating and sticking to a budget, and using your own money, I guarantee you will feel way more progress by the end of the year. Get out of the credit card rat race and start running your own race. One that doesn't end with a pile of debt and regret and only a stretchy, sticky hand consolation prize to show for it. If you're wondering how to actually pay off your credit card debt, live without a credit card, and reward yourself instead, check out Ramsey Plus. It's an online membership that gives you all the resources, videos, and tools you need to get out of debt and reach your money goals faster. You can sign up for a free 14-day trial and check out Lesson 5 in Financial Peace University. It's called Buyer Beware, and in that lesson, we break down the slick marketing that companies use to get you into financial trouble. To start your free trial, text the word Fine Print 2, all one word, to the number 33789. That's Fine Print followed by the numeral 2 to the number 33789. Or just click the link in the show notes. You've been listening to The Fine Print. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen to podcasts and share it with a friend. Our show is produced by Chris Wright, Madison Browder, Eric Cheslevich, and Chris Dean. Our associate producer is Amanda Rogers. This episode was engineered and mixed by Will Rudder with writing help from Eva Daniel. Our executive producer is Blake Thompson. 
I'm George Camel, and remember, no amount of credit card rewards can make you rich, and no amount of hand sanitizer can disinfect you from the Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. Thank mm-hmm. you.